occasional spike events. You're going to spike occasionally because resource utilization is not going to be consistent on any server I've ever worked on. But if you are going to use these, there is a particular config parameter called Max SQL Text Monitored. Of you who are used to uh, looking through SP Sysmon output, every once in a while you see a message that says, consider reducing the size of Max SQL Text Monitored. This value, which is half the distance from what you've got it set to, to actually use, unless you know that you're consistently using very small uh, state. I recommend keeping it at about this level, just about 16K. With late 12.5, mid to late 12.5, there was a Sybase bug, sorry, an ASE bug, that could cause stack cases, theoretically non stack cases, but stack traces nonetheless, when this was set to 16 of 16384. So I've also used 16383 as a max for this on occasion. But it enables us to pick up generally most of the SQL text that we're picking up there. The default is kind of small, and if you have, for example, a long select list, you may not even see the from clause listed. So bump that so that you've got this information in there. I note that it is static, so it's not going to take effect until the next time you cycle the server. But if you set it now, the next time you cycle the server, you've got that on man. Above and MDA tables, we also have the ability to use query metrics. Let you your performance for your session. So this is something that you can do while you're running. This is very useful when you're running in some sort of a, a, a debug mode. Hey, these are not running well. The developers are stuck. You go fix it. Or if you're a developer, hey, developer, fix it. Figure out what the problem is. That give you very specific information on what's being performed and what and how. Now, if you're running with something like Sybase Central, you can turn options on. We act this thing, this automatically. This behind the scenes, or you can do it manually yourself. So pick up. Execution time, elapsed time, logical and physical I/O. A difference there is logical I/O is a page request. A physical I/O means we had to queue this the channel and wait for something to come back. That side to a physical I.O. is not so much uh, all the wait time they have to incur in order to the I.O. back, the page back, but uh, issue there, and that is you have to wait for the uh, swap to occur, because your process actually swaps out uh, when it's gone, and when the page comes back, it swaps back in, so there's a lot of overhead involved in, in that physical I.O. Uh, picks all the information up. Uh, note that this is likely to replace stats IO and stats time uh, when you are doing your debugging and query tuning. For capture metrics, you have to configure the server to allow the metrics capture. SP configure enable metrics capture. The default is it is not enabled. This is going to be something the SA has to turn on. You may have to set this for your session. At the session level, you'll say, metrics capture on. Use these to get everything back to the beginning or pick everything up from the sys query metrics table from query metrics. What do I do with metrics? In my class I, I have uh, quite a few slides on this and here we're trying to get the really short version because you guys are going to want to get back to work eventually. So SP metrics flush or backup or drop we've got the ability to uh, collect these things, uh, set up metrics groups, keep the groups, cache them so that we can come back and pick them back up, uh, compare them to one another. Lots of cool stuff we can do with the individual query metrics. Looking for this and don't remember a syntax, there is an SP metrics help that pays back up the command list for the metrics. Uh, for those of you who are DBA types, this is the thing that you're you're doing with say, an SP underscore uh, uh, tempt e. uh, It's not a show, it's a help. So uh, here it's SP underscore metrics help. So you can do with this. Uh, you can see different groups using the backup parameter. You can flush them. 
You drop specific groups. In that second example, we we're dropping groups two through five. We're backing up a group to uh, 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 the group to group six, and you know, I want to look at group six later, uh, or this group metrics later. So I'm going to assign it to group six. So I've got the ability to take these things and compare them later, combine them later, look at them later, and the final while we're working on things. One of the things that I like about the the gig I'm working on right now is uh, we're doing a lot of performance metrics, and I actually have the luxury of, of having reproducible work. So we're uh, bringing the base in, turning all the monitoring stuff on, and then saying, and all jobs are running. And then for the next iteration, we're restoring the database, changing all the system settings, and then saying, okay, let's run the same set of applications again. Very cool from my perspective to be able to do apples to apples comparisons. I get that extremely rarely. Okay, so uh, that's very useful for when you're trying to tune your own session. What if you're trying to tune somebody else's session? Trace all the SQL text for an existing session to a fiddle file using the set trace file session option. This is great when somebody calls and says, oh, this is Fred and everything is slow again. Well, Fred's the only one calling and complaining. Well, guess what? We can find out what SPID Fred is running from. Uh, we can uh, we can a variety of ways. It's in the sys processes table. Uh, Fred may be able to select uh, at, at SPID, or we can just simply uh, uh, to see who and find out what the SPID is for Fred's log that we can say set trace file name of the file and specify for SPID if we're not specifying it for our own SPID. What this allows you to do is to create a file which is tracing all of the work that SPID is doing. Very cool stuff. Note that that file name uh, is based on uh, a specific you may want to set. So if you set a, a, a very specific have over there. Remember that everything that the server is doing is generally running as the Sybase user. So that Sybase user needs permission to write to that file. Uh, if you not specify full path, it's going to write to where that default directory is for that Sybase user. We double the trace file, we'll set trace file off. Very cool stuff here. We're saying set trace file, uh, and there's the trace file name uh, for SPID 12. It's all server all SQL for the server process to the file at that path. If you specify the SPID, you get it for your own session. Uh, this is very cool stuff. At this point, if you're doing this for Fred, you are trapping every SQL statement that Fred is running. I killed for this for years and years and years. Well, maybe not killed, but you know, this would have certainly made my life easier. Uh, I'm coming in for a tuning gig for a week. I'd much rather solve all the problems on Monday and uh, then do fine tuning the rest of the week than have to struggle for a few days and have Pete over my shoulder saying, "Okay, you got it yet? Got it yet? Not it's not yet." So the SQL as well as the query plans, which is useful. The stats, which is useful. The show SQL text, which is useful, and uh, a lot of other useful information for tracing what's actually going on here. So what you're picking up here is the actual query plan that was used, which is kind of nice. No, you have to be the SA or the SSO in order to do the set trace file, and you must have been granted set trace file permission. Well, yeah, I'm the SA, so I don't have to worry about this. Uh, I don't know what permissions you as a group have. Set show SQL text. You can print the SQL text for ad hoc queries, etc., using the set show SQL text. You don't enable this one before you execute it, as you do with some of the others, to collect the diagnostic. You can, when you get the things running slow telephone call. In order to do this, uh, first you do have to do the DBCC trace on 3604, which says send the information in here. Syntax for the text set shows SQL text on or off. When it's enabled, all text uh, goes to standard out for each command or system procedure you enter. Note that this can be voluminous. Being my big word for you can get lots of information. This is, can be useful for when you're running the uh, trace file. So, summary of section. Every up encountering performance problems. On a good day, you have some sort of tool that's collecting this stuff for you uh, for the long term, which enables you to uh, answer questions like, hey, things were running slow an hour ago. How come? 
get that resolved. Uh, on another day, you don't have those things running. People say, hey, things are low now. Figure out what's going on. Well, you've got the SP who, you've got the SP lock. That's not always enough information. Our SM tool has been around for a while. SP Sysmon is a very good thing to understand. I uh, recently had reason to go back and look at uh, the version 15, how to read the SP Sysmon output. There's now a whole separate PDF on how to read the SP Sysmon output. If you're a performance geek like me, this is a very useful thing to have read through. It doesn't tell you everything about all the ins and outs. It's got insight about what these things are intended to be. With the F12.5, Sybase introduced the MDA tables, good for identifying what's going on within the server activity. 